In this video, I'm going to show you how I give my illustrations that vintage Rizzo print look. I'll show you how to start with something like this and end up with this. Before we get started, let's quickly talk about how Rizzo printing works so we understand what we're emulating. Ink is pushed through a stencil on an ink drum, and then when you want to do multiple color prints, the ink drum is swapped out. So when you want to print multiple colors, you have to print them one at a time on top of the other color. Because of this process, the amount of printed colors is usually limited, but you can still get a lot of color variation because Rizograph ink is translucent. That translucency allows colors to be overprinted to create new colors. You can also use any combination of color tints to create even more variation. In the drawing I'll be using for this demo, I'm only going to use three colors. You may think, hey, that's crazy. It looked like there was a whole bunch of colors in the example you showed. Well, stay tuned to find out how we make that magic happen. For this demo, I'll be working in Adobe Fresco on my iPad but the process would be nearly the same if you were using Procreate or even Photoshop. For the best results in most options, you'll want to use the Retro Supply Co. Rezo brush set that I'll link to in the description. That said, if you don't want to buy a new brush set for this, I totally get it. You could still make the process work using any random textured brushes. I think some of the default brushes in Procreate would work fine for this. And if you have Adobe Fresco, there's tons of brush options that you could find in Kyle Webster's collection that would work for this as well. There will be some things I do in the demonstration that are reliant on the retro supply brushes because they're designed to do this and they have a lot of specialty brushes that I'll be demonstrating. So you may have to skip those areas if you use different brushes, but you'll still be able to get close to the overall look of a Rizzo print. My style is very line based, so the process might be a little different for you if yours isn't, but I still think you'll be able to get the gist of things and follow along and adapt as needed to work in your own style. When you're setting up a new document for this, you'll want to work in a fairly large size because we'll be working with fine textures. If you work too small, there won't be enough pixels to really give you a good experience for that sort of texture. For my illustration, I'm going to be working at 4,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. This size will be big enough to give me plenty of control over my texture, but won't be totally cumbersome in, in an enormous file. All right, let's get into it. I'll see you on my iPad. The first thing to do is to pick colors. And I'm gonna take each of my three colors that I've picked and put them on individual layers and set those layers to multiply. So I have pink on this one. My next color is gonna be yellow. I'm gonna draw a little yellow swatch here and overlap it a little bit. This way I can see the new color that has formed when these two overlay and mix. So now I'll do a new layer for my third color, set that to multiply, choose blue, and I will overlap both of those colors here. Now we will see that we've got purple, green, and then this darker red color that we can use as our line color. So I merged all those layers together and now I'm gonna make individual swatches from the new colors that we have. So what I'm gonna do now is set my line work layer as a reference layer and then make a new layer below it. This way I can paint on that layer and have my colors on a separate layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these swatches with the paint bucket and just fill in my whole image. This will serve as a guide for when we're doing our color mixing. So I'm going to do a purple background here. Now I just need to go back in and add the white. So I'll just fill in these white areas. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is just do a quick export and save this as a PNG into my image files. Okay, so I've gotten rid of everything but my line work layer and placed that color image to use as a guide. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, go into my brushes, go find my Rezo brushes. I'm gonna go down and choose 100% and then number one, because this is my first color. So I'll bring the brush down to a size that is reasonable to work with. Now, on a new layer, I'm just gonna go in and start coloring all of my blue areas using my little color guide image on the side. And I'm just gonna fill this all in, which will be a little tedious to watch. So I'm gonna skip ahead a bit. Remember with these Rezo brushes, you can't lift when you're coloring because otherwise it will 
darken the color as they automatically multiply over each other. So because you can't lift, sometimes it's tricky to stay really tight within the line, so you might have to go back in and fix stuff afterwards. So this is a little bit of high speed action here, but as you can see, I'm just trying to color in as close as I can. Adjusting the brush to make it a little bit bigger, to fill in areas a little bit faster. Got a little bit of hat poking through there, sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and color in the green areas because green is made from blue and yellow. So everything that's gonna be green needs to be blue on our blue layer. So I wanna have some different variations in green. So to do that, I'm going to choose one of these different percentage Rizzo brushes. So you can go down to, let's say 70, or you know, you could go all the way down to 10 if you wanted to. But I want this snake alligator thing to be the darkest green, so I'm bringing that back up to 100%. Let's see what else we got those two green areas. Okay, so now I need to do the purple areas because again, purple mixes with the pink. No, not purple. The blue mixes with the pink to make the purple. So this area down here is a pretty tricky area and as you can see, I made a mess of the inside of that hand. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna grab the magic wand, go back to my line work layer, select inside the hand, then go back to the blue layer and then hit erase. And now we have a nice clean hand. So it's important to keep your hands clean. That's another pro tip. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Got this little thing over here and uh, I think we're good. All right, now let's work on pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the 100% number two because this is my second color and we wanna have a slightly different texture than the first one so that when they overlap, it looks more natural. I'm gonna make a new layer, set that layer to multiply. So I'm gonna start coloring and through the magic of editing, ta-da, it's all pink. Let's go and find the red areas and color those in because you guessed it. The red is made from the pink and the yellow, so it needs to be on both of those layers. So again, I'm gonna choose a different percentage here to add some variation. I want this purple to be a little bit lighter. Oh, look at that, I finished so fast. Use a little darker area here. Checking everything. Oh, looks like I missed a spot right here in this alligator snake's mouth. So this is no big deal. I'm just gonna go back to the blue and I'm gonna go back to the number one brush because blue is our first color. So the number one, 100%. Click back on the blue layer. You wanna make sure you're on the right layer. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and color this little area in. See, no big deal if you miss anything. So now we'll go back to the red, the pink layer, I mean. Choose pink, and now we'll switch to 100% number two, because two is our second color, we want a different texture. And we will go ahead and paint over that area. And we are all set. No problem. And now we can move on to our third color. For our last and final color, I'm gonna do the process a little bit differently. If your work is similar to mine or has, you know, tight, line quality like this, we can use a way that's a little bit quicker and will save you some time. So what I'm gonna do is make a new layer for our yellow. And I've set that layer to multiply just like we did for the other ones. So what I'm gonna do now is select the magic wand tool. The ma magic wand is over here. If it doesn't show up right in your toolbar, just look underneath selection tools for the magic wand. You may have one of these other ones showing up on your toolbar instead. And then we'll go back to our layers, select our line work layer. And now we're just gonna go in and tap the areas that are yellow or that need to be yellow. So we'll make a selection of all these yellow things. We'll zoom in here so we can get the little counters in between these letters, these eyeballs, little rainbow stripes. Let's see what else we're missing here, this little circle, and then this little thing over here. Okay, so now that we have all our yellow stuff selected, we can go back to our yellow layer, 
And now we'll switch to our Rizzo brush. We'll go ahead and grab our 100% and then number three because this is our third color. So we want that different texture. And now I'm gonna bring the brush size as big as it'll go. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can get this whole thing and I'm just gonna paint over the whole image. Now we've just filled in all of our yellow colors in one fail swoop. Fail swoop? I don't know what that means. I think I'm saying that wrong. Fail swoop, fail swoop, I don't, I don't know. So as you can see, this is super fast and it worked really well. But again, the reason why this doesn't work for everyone is because if you're using a more textured line or your line work is a little more rough and not you know smooth like this, you're gonna get weird little edges around all of your colors and it's not gonna look good. There is some control here with the slider, so if you are getting some white area, you can experiment with moving this up to increase the tolerance of the selection, or if it's going too far, like out of bounds where you don't want it to go, you can pull that down. So you can experiment with that and see if that helps out making this work for you. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and select the green areas. So I'm gonna click back on my line work layer and then go in and select the green areas. Zoom in to get these nostril edges, these little scales. This little thing over here. I think that's it. So I want some variation here. I want this little snake thing to be a little bit darker. So first I'm going to bring the brush size down a little bit, just so it's still big, but doesn't go into some areas where I, I don't want it to be. So I'm gonna double check that I have the yellow layer selected and then paint this in. Now go up here, do this area to sort of balance the darker green and uh, maybe this thing up here, why not? And this down here. So I want this face to be a little bit less solid green, so I'm gonna choose a lower percentage to get this, uh, we'll call it like that, a little bit better for this guy. Again, it gives us more variation in our color. And I'll do it for this thing too. And uh, I guess that's it. But maybe we'll go even less yellow for these little antenna things. Let me erase this little overshot there as you can see it shows more of that blue texture through all right so now we can move on to the red areas so i'm going to select the areas that i want to be the darkest so definitely that no and i need this up here we'll do this little stripe to give it more contrast against the pink stripe next to it this tongue and okay, so back on our yellow layer, go back in, select 100% number three because this is our third color. Bring the brush size way up because we only have selected the things that we want to fill in so we can just go over the whole image. Deselect that and now we will select the other areas of red. So I want this to be a little bit lighter and we'll do that as well. This one too. All right, so let's, uh, yeah, we'll do this one a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's good. I like that, that it's pretty different from the darker red. It's a nice texture. Yeah, I like that color variation. So now that I'm looking at this, I think that the yellow in the eyes is too dark. So what I'm gonna do is make a lighter tone there. So if I go back to my line work layer, use the magic wand, select inside the eyes, and then erase that. And now I still have it selected and I'm on the yellow layer, so I can just go ahead and choose a lighter brush and then paint in that area. Yeah, that's better. Um, but, I don't want that to be the only thing that, that that's that light yellow, so let me go ahead and select something else to balance it out a little bit. Maybe uh, this 
circle here. So I'm going to go back to my line work layer, use the magic wand, select that area, get that little spot between the A, and maybe that too. Then we'll erase it and go back to our brush, which already has the lighter one selected, and then fill that in. Cool. All right. So what we need to do is put our line work on each of the different color layers. All the colors will overlay to make the darkest color and that will become our line work. Because the Rezo brushes are translucent and automatically multiply, we can't just paint over the black. So what we need to do is make it white. If you're using Procreate, you can just select the layer and invert it and make it white, but we can't do that in Fresco, but it's still pretty easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my line work layer put that below the other things. This is so just in case I mess something up and I need to refer to it, I can come back and it'll be there. So I'm gonna select my line work layer again and we need to make it white so that we can paint over it with a Rezo brush and allow the color to come through. So I'm gonna select the layer and I'm gonna choose lock transparency. This will allow us to color just the areas that we have a drawing on. It's called Alpha Lock in Procreate. So I'm gonna select white, and I have a brush saved to my favorites that's just a basic hard round brush, and it's just set to like a massive size. Um, so I use this just for this purpose. I'm gonna make sure I have white, and you can see it's like 3,400 pixels. And now in just a couple swipes, I can color all the line work in white. So now that I have this white line work layer, we need to duplicate it for each of our colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this two times. And then I'm gonna drag it on top of each of our color layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of them except for one set so we can work on that first. So we'll do the blue one first and I'm gonna select the line work layer and we will make it blue. So we'll go ahead, select our blue color and then grab our Rezo, bar, Rezo brush. We'll get 100% and we'll choose number one because blue is our first color. So I'll make the brush size as big as it'll go and then I will just paint over the whole thing to reveal our line work in blue. So now that we have our line work layer and our fill layer, we can go ahead and merge these two together to create our full blue layer. So now we have everything we need on that layer. So we'll do the same thing for the pink layer. We'll just make sure that we're choosing number two because pink is our second color. Fill it in, do the same for yellow. So now we have our three final colors. The only thing we have to do is add in the background, which I just remembered. So let's go back to the line work layer, which is a good thing we kept it. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the background areas. And we're gonna go back to the blue layer. We're gonna grab our Rezo 100% number one again, because blue is our first color and just gonna paint in this background. Now we'll just do the same thing on our pink layer, but we'll choose the number two because it's our second color. And make sure we choose pink. Paint that in. And this is the last part of making our three colors. So now we can turn them on. Look at that, that's two colors, that's fancy. Isn't that fun? That's pretty neat. Look at that, blue and green. Sometimes I like just looking at them as two different colors. So anyway, this could be the final step. You could be done here if you are satisfied with the way this looks. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mess this stuff up some more. If you wanna keep messing up your image, keep watching. To me, the thing that makes this Rezo looks so cool is the imperfections, the areas where the color doesn't fully fill in and just the way things aren't perfect. So what I usually like to do is select 
maybe the lightest color. So I'm going to do the yellow here. And then I just grab the selection tool and just move it a little bit so it's slightly off. Doing this gives some cool color shifts. And then you get like that, this little area over here where you get purple on the edge because the yellow is no longer there. Also, at this point, I may go in and look and see if there's some areas where I want to remove one of the colors. I think I would like this better if it just had a purple outline. So to do that, I'm just going to go onto my yellow layer. And then I can just erase the line work. And then you'll see we just get the nice purple line work there to give us a little bit more variety in our image. So now that I know that I like it, I'm going to go ahead and use the mat the lasso selection tool and then just draw around the stuff that I want to erase. And this is just a, a quick way to do this as opposed to manually erasing all of it. So I'll select that and then I can just hit erase and then it's gone. And we have purple line work there. So I don't want this to be the only area where I do this kind of thing. So maybe we'll also do it to the I am letters here. I think it would be cool if they were just red. So we'll select the blue layer and then erase that to give us that red color, which I think looks pretty cool. I think that was a good choice. What do you think? Nope. Come on. Another thing we can do is maybe make some highlights by going in and erasing some areas. So I'm thinking these big eyes on this alien, maybe we can use the eraser and just erase some of that to make it look like a little highlight. So I'm gonna grab this, uh, let's see, one of these textured erasers, and then just go in and erase. Using the textured one allows it to sort of match the texture of the razor brush. Maybe we'll do some to these eyes down here. We'll just have to erase each of the layers, which I think is fine. I like that it'll give us even more variation in tone. So I'll erase the yellow layer. And erase the pink. And then the blue. Cool. I like the way that looks. Okay. Maybe this nose. We'll put a little highlight in the nose. Why not? Okay. So the next thing I like to do is mess up individual color layers. So let's turn all these off and just work on the blue. Because this stage is some experimentation and I don't really know how things are going to turn out, I don't want to do it directly on this layer. And also, if I were to draw more blue onto this layer, it would automatically multiply and give us a darker version of that blue, which I don't want to do. I mean, you could do that if you wanted to, but it wouldn't be authentic. So, I don't know. You do you, do you okay? So, we got a new layer, and I'm going to play around with some of these Rezo print defect brushes that come with the set. These are just all kinds of weird things that you may see uh, on a Rezo print job, just like imperfections where things are messed up. So we've got some, like a print defect, we've got roller smudges, all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna use this texture in here and just sort of paint some of that in to just add some more variation and imperfection. As you can see, I'm just sort of doing this willy nilly because again, this is a, a defect so it wouldn't be too particular I'm not really thinking too hard about this maybe use it as like a, a shadow even though that would be too much of a coincidence for a mistake to form a shadow but hey another thing i like to do is grab a white brush so since we're on a new layer that's not set to multiply we can use the white brush to erase some areas to break up the texture even more let's try some of these other brushes that's kind of cool. Well, maybe we'll do some over here. Who knows? So now we'll merge that down, and now we have our updated blue layer. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing for the pink. And done. And the yellow, uh, done. Okay, now look at this. Look at all this cool texture. We got even more stuff going on, look at that. 
Oh, yeah. Ooh, look at that right there. And these little lines here. Okay, I'm having too much fun to stop. So now what I'm gonna do is make a new layer and play around with some of these shader brushes that you may have noticed. So we'll do this to maybe add in some, I don't know, some shadows. So got a new layer. Since we're working on the blue, we don't wanna overlap colors again. Maybe just add a little nose shadow here. Little uh, under the eye shadow. Well, the eyes we can get, we can give a little little shape to the eye over here with the blue. Maybe some over here. On the inside of this mouth. This stretched out lip thing. All right. So now let's uh, do some for the pink. Some alligator snake shadow. So you may notice that this doesn't look that accurate because the layer isn't set to multiply, so it's not fully multiplying. So I'm gonna multiply it so we can see what it looks like, but we need to remember to switch it back to normal before we merge it so that it doesn't affect our color. If that's a little confusing, I apologize, but just trust me. So we'll add in some more shadow here, a little bit more here. I think this is looking pretty cool. Sometimes I overdo it. I might be overdoing it here. You can let me know in the comments. So if you wanna get even more wild, make it look a little bit more authentic, what you can do is scan in a sheet of paper or find some paper texture on the internet or like Adobe stock or Apple stock. Uh, I have a piece of textured paper that I scanned in and I'm just going to go ahead and place that here and convert this to a pixel layer so it crops. And then I'm just going to set this to multiply. And now we'll get that paper texture on top of our print. So, in addition to all the texture from the Rizo print, we've got paper texture as well. I think that adds a nice little touch to finish this off. So are you excited to try this out? I know I've been addicted to doing it ever since the first time I played around with these brushes and I've done a, a ton of different things using them. If you do make something, definitely post a link in the comments so that we can all go and check it out. I'm really excited to see what you make. If you liked this video and found it helpful, can you just go ahead and give me a, a thumbs up? Maybe subscribe to this channel? I'll be posting new content every week, so check back soon. Good talk.